So you're looking for a master's program but don't know where to start. What topic should you study? What school are you going to choose? How are you going to pay it? <laughs> One year ago, I took two courses in a master's program before dropping out. The program ended up not being right for me despite having really high hopes for it. So what went wrong? Since dropping out, I've done hours and hours of research, conducted several informational interviews, and talked to graduates of master's programs to figure out how you can find the best master's program for you and avoid what I did and drop out after the first semester. Let's jump right in. To stick with the overall theme of my channel, this is specifically geared towards going into a master's of environmental science or a related sustainability field. However, if you are looking for general advice on applying for master's programs, these tips do tend to apply to other subjects. So we're welcome to have you here anyways. When you are looking for your master's program, there are three main areas that you want to focus your research on. The faculty, financing the degree, and the reputation of the school slash the culture of the program that you're going into. Now, before you answer any of those questions for any of the schools that you're looking at, the first thing to decide if you haven't already decided this is do you want to do a research master's program or a professional master's program? And then whichever one you choose from there, you'll dig into those three main areas to focus your research on. As I mentioned earlier, the first thing you're going to want to focus your research on is the faculty. For any school that you are looking into, look at the faculty first. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you don't find a faculty advisor or mentor before you apply, you're chances of graduating and finishing the program drop drastically. So please research the faculty before you even look any further into the program or the school itself. When you're looking at the faculty, look at their research interests, see if any align with yours. Look at their research labs and research institutes that they do research at. And if you're still interested in that professor, read their research papers, get into the details of what they're researching. And if you resonate with that paper and you have questions or you want to know more, email the professor. Just send them a cold email. Their email is listed on the school website. Tell them that you resonated with their work and point out specifically what it is about the research that you found compelling. Now, if they don't respond within the first week, please do not be discouraged. Academics are incredibly busy. Ping them again. Send them a follow-up email a week later. If you still don't hear from them, reach out in a month. Keep bugging them until they finally get a chance to look at their inbox and answer an email from someone that they don't actually know yet. Chances are they do want to reach out to you, they just don't have time. When should you reach out to them? Late summer to early fall is usually the best time frame if you're looking to start in the following fall school year. And in this email, allow funding to be one of the questions that you ask. You'll want to find a research program that has really good funding opportunities, and if the professor emails back saying they have no money for graduate students, at least you won't be wasting your time. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Now all that is directed towards research programs. If you are looking for a professional program, still look at the faculty. Look at where they have previously worked, what companies they're affiliated with. You want them to have a very impressive resume. Bonus points if they have written a book or done a TED talk. If you get close with them and they become your mentor while you're taking classes with them, their network might end up being your network by proxy. And it's still a good idea to send a cold email to a professor if you are pursuing a professional master's degree. It really sets the stage and shows that you are already really committed to the program. Moving on to the second area that you want to focus your research on, and that is financing the actual degree. How accessible is the program and how are you actually going to pay for it? Now, accessibility encompasses not only tuition or the cost of classes, which includes the availability of financial aid and graduate student funding, but you'll also want to consider the cost of living in that location if you're doing an in-person program and the availability of affordable housing for graduate students at that school. You'll want to consider all of that when you're calculating how much it will actually cost to attend that master's program, not just tuition. If you end up going the research route, the college should pay for your school. You are contributing your own intellectual property to the school. You're doing research for them and they should not only fund you, but they should also give you a stipend because you're a full-time student. If you are going into a professional master's program, your company should pay for your degree. Bottom line, you should never pay for your master's degree out of pocket. It is not worth it, and there are plenty of funding streams that you can find if you try hard enough. Finally, the third area you're going to want to focus on when you're researching your master's programs, and that is the reputation of the school. And I also lumped in the culture of the program with this one. So reputation of the institution does matter, especially if you are going into the business world for 
a environmental consulting company. Oftentimes, if you have a bachelor's degree in environmental science and then a master's degree from a different school, the company that is hiring you will really just focus on the school that you got your master's in. And if the company that's hiring you knows that that school has a really good environmental science program, that just boosts your chances of landing that job even further. Now, the actual culture of the program also matters. Your network that you build in your master's degree is so important. I could argue that it is more important than your network that you're building in your undergraduate degree. You're going to want to look at the social climate and the support structure of the actual department that you're doing research in and the university at large. One way to do this is to reach out to the program's alumni. So if you're wanting to get your master's with the environmental science department, go onto the website of the environmental science department and look at the current students. They will usually list them on the website and do a little stalking. They might have the graduate student's contact information listed. If they do, reach out to them. Ask for a 30-minute informational interview where you can ask questions about research opportunities, the faculty, the culture of the school and the department. They will give honest opinions that aren't necessarily listed on the school website, and they might even give you some tips for getting into the school and acquiring funding with that specific program. If their contact information is not listed on the website, see if you can find them on LinkedIn. Most graduate students do have a LinkedIn because it's just going to help them grow their professional network. So send them a message on LinkedIn, tell them you're interested in the school and the program that they're in, and ask again for a 30-minute informational interview and see what information you can find from them. The biggest piece of advice you can take away from this if you want to find a master's program that is right for you is you won't know what the program is right for you until you put yourself out there. If you reach out to faculty and current students with that program and you're authentically yourself, the right people will respond and things will start to fall into place. Hopefully this guide will help you in your search for a master's program and lead you to a program that will set you up for a successful and happy career in environmental science. If you're not sure if a master's degree in environmental science is right for you, you might want to check out this video that I'll link over here somewhere where I talk about my own experience getting an environmental science degree and whether or not I thought it was worth it. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Good luck in your search and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.